When I was 15, back in my home country of Macedonia, during our cold and groggy winters, I wasn't allowed to leave any windows or doors of my house open. It wasn't because we were afraid to let the heat escape. No, it was because we didn't want to let in the so-called smelly fog. Now, this is a picture of my home city, Skopje, and I can assure you, the city is there, you just can't see it because of all this smelly fog. When I used to ask my parents about it, they would say, you know, this happens every winter, spring will come, this will all go away, so really, don't put too much thought into it. And I didn't, until four years ago, when a pile of seemingly unimportant data would change my life and transform my country. Now, the key word there was data. In this day and age of technology, we create and collect data at an enormous pace. IBM estimates that daily we create 2.5 quintillion bytes of data. That is roughly 40 million copies of Wikipedia written daily. Some of this data is public and is shared with us either through online or offline data sets. For example, in the Netherlands, the Ministry of Internal Affairs shares 13,000 of these open data sets on ranging topics from agricultural to politics to health and to the economy. That is a huge amount of data. But the question is, are we really putting it to good use? Being a bored 21-year-old college student in Macedonia forced to stay indoors because of the smelly fog, I was searching for my next project to do. As I was looking online, I stumbled upon a little government website which hosted these local open data sets. And as I riffled through the titles, one caught my eye in particular. The title was Air Pollution Data Set. Now, being the geek that I am, I downloaded this data and I wrote a little algorithm which would analyze it and give me some information and some numbers of what it was trying to tell me. But the problem was, my algorithm had a bug. It constantly kept giving me unrealistic numbers. I mean, it was telling me that air pollution in Macedonia was 20 times over the EU limit. It was four times over Beijing. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's unrealistic. It's, it's true. My country was suffocating at the hands of an invisible enemy. That smelly fog, that smog. But the data was out there, it was public. So why wasn't anyone talking about it? Where are the news stories? Where are people on social media? Where are protesters on the streets? Silence. I couldn't stand by and watch this happen because what I learned that day was very logical, but very powerful. The data was there and it was telling a horrific story but because it was being presented in such a complex and incomprehensible way, for the average user, it wasn't adding any value. On the contrary, this data was being overlooked. I took it upon myself to help my country out and to find a way of presenting this data to my fellow citizens that would inform them about its meaning. My solution to the problem was Moi Vozduch, or My Air a web and mobile app which takes this raw data and with the help of visualizations, charts, graphs and colors, explains it in a readable and understandable way to every citizen who wants to know what it means. I published this app and just one month in, the response was amazing. Over one million people had access to this data either through the two mobile apps, the web app, or simply by following the news which was finally starting to pick up on the subject. People were shocked. People were outraged. Some of them even said I was lying. We had the then Minister of Ecology go on TV and give a statement and say, you know what, don't trust Gorian, don't trust Moj Vozduk, he's lying, he's being paid by the Americans and by Soros, you know, like an angry little child throwing a tantrum. <laughs> so I go back on and I give a counter statement and say, you know what, Minister, I'll give you an idea. How about you and me sit down in front of the media? I will open my app and you open your government website and we'll compare the data. If the data differs, I'll shut down my app, I'll burn all the code I've written, I'll throw the servers away. But if the data is the same, 
then you resign. Guess who was never heard from again? I mean, sure, at this point, they could have gone down the standard corrupt government path and locked me up on some false accusations or charges, but the data was public. It was out there on their own servers. So locking up the messenger wasn't going to stop what was about to happen. The next winter, people were outraged by the government's unwillingness to do anything about the problem. We took to the streets of five of Macedonia's biggest cities and we blocked them in signs of protest, trying to raise awareness among our colleagues and our citizens that this is a huge problem. It's not only this. We had politicians in parliament waving around screenshots of the app, trying to convince their own colleagues that this is not a political problem, nor is it a racial nor gender issue. This is something that unites us all. Because in the end, we all breathe the same air. There's no escape from it. We even had scientists come down from Sweden and do research on the data and the effects that it was having on public health. And what they came up with was this number. 3,000 yearly premature deaths directly attributed to air pollution. 3,000 of my fellow citizens, 3,000 of my friends, 3,000 of my family. Let me ask you all a question. With, with the raise of hands, how many of you this week have checked your phones for the weather, if it's going to rain? So how many, how many of you have done that? Exactly, keep your hands up, please, and look around. Imagine that all of you here are living in a country like Macedonia, and instead of keeping your hands up for checking the weather, you're keeping your hands up because you've checked your phones to know if the air outside is even safe to leave your homes. Let that sink in. Macedonia may be far in the east, and our problem may be far greater, but the Netherlands isn't out of the woods either. Just last year, the courts ruled that the Dutch state must find ways of getting more clean air, because if nothing's done, it'll take way until 2030 before the EU set goals for clean air are reached by the Netherlands. And until then, the Europe European Environmental Agency estimates that over 11,000 people every year will prematurely die directly attributed to air pollution from the roadways, households, and the industry. But it's not all that dark. Because we live in a day and age of technology, we are now more than ever as citizens empowered to act. By utilizing open data sets like the one I use in Macedonia, we are able to run our own analysis, we are able to come up with our own conclusions, and we are able to lobby by ourselves for changes. And we shouldn't even let the sky be the limit. I've crossed that barrier, and I'm now working with the European Space Agency to help analyze air pollution data coming from satellites to pinpoint sources on the ground which ground sensors cannot pick up. One such source was located recently in my city, a medical trash incinerator donated to Macedonia by the UK in 2001. The problem? If we were to set up this exact same medical trash incinerator to operate within the EU, that would be illegal because of high emission levels. And if a simple boy like me can pull this off, imagine what you guys an incredibly ambitious and I know intelligent audience can do. I mean, you guys, all I ask from you today, when you go home, go online, check out all this open data that is out there, see what catches your eye, what triggers your instinct, and spend some time into understanding what it's trying to tell you. Because I can guarantee you that every single set of open data hides its secrets and mysteries waiting for adventurers like you guys to discover them. As for me, this winter, I will be back on the streets of Macedonia, shoulder to shoulder with 3,000 of my fellow activists, fighting a war against an invisible enemy. Progress has been made, but there is still a long way to go until we can literally breathe at ease, and data is the pathway that will take us there. Thank you.
Wow, Gorion, yeah. What an amazing story. What an adventure. Thank you. Hey, you mentioned that we are sort of 200 people here. Mm -hmm. Is there a way we can help you and your struggle and the people out there in Macedonia? There definitely is. I mean, the topic of today is misbehaving beautifully. And I know at the start of the talk, Ruth Hurst said that we shouldn't take pictures of, of, of the talks, but we're going to misbehave beautifully for just a second, and only for now, because the, otherwise they'll yell at me. Uh, if you guys want to help out our fight for getting Macedonia clean air, if you want to raise international awareness and tell my government that we are watching, that the international community is watching, and to put more pressure on them tackling the subject, please take your phones out now. Take a picture of me, take a picture of this slide and share it on social media. Share it publicly with this hashtag. Because in the end, having clean air to breathe is a human right. I want to thank you all so much. You guys have been amazing. Thank you very much.